Alaska, a vast, frozen, and barren land that lies at the northwestern tip of North America, separated from the rest of the United States. With rugged mountains, icy plains, and harsh winters, it's a land that borders both Canada and Russia, with the Arctic Ocean to its north. But did you know this icy wilderness was once Russian territory? That's right. Back in the 1800s, Alaska was a problem for Russia, a financial and military headache they were eager to get rid of. Two key Key players emerge in this story, the USA and Canada. While both countries had an interest in expanding their territory, only one of them stepped forward when the opportunity arose. So why was the USA of all nations keen to buy this seemingly useless piece of land for what would be $7.2 million, $140 million in today's money, especially when Canada, Alaska's closest neighbor, showed little interest? This decision would change the course of history, but what was the USA thinking? And why was Russia want to sell? And why wasn't Canada interested at all? Let's dive into this frozen mystery. Let's travel back to the early 1800s when Alaska wasn't American land at all. It was part of the vast Russian Empire. The Russians had claimed Alaska in the late 1700s, hoping to profit from the rich fur trade. For a while, it seemed promising. The fur of sea otters and other animals was incredibly valuable, and Alaska was a wild frontier, offering the Russians new resources to exploit. But as the decades passed, the tides began to turn. Alaska's harsh climate made settlement difficult, and its remote location made it hard to defend. Russia, stretched thin by its sprawling empire, was beginning to see Alaska less as an asset and more as a liability. To make things worse, conflicts were brewing closer to home. The Crimean War, 1853 to 1856, was a turning point. Russia was fighting against against powerful European nations like Britain and France, and its military resources were drained. Alaska, isolated from the rest of the empire and difficult to protect, suddenly seemed like a vulnerable outpost. The Russian government started to realize that holding on to this distant, frozen land was more trouble than it was worth. And then there was the looming threat of British expansion. British forces controlled Canada, just across the border from Alaska. Russia feared that in the event of another conflict, Alaska could easily fall into British hands without a single shot being fired. In the Russian capital, Alaska began to be seen as a ticking time bomb, a liability that could turn into a costly war if left unchecked. With internal pressures mounting and the empire's finances strained, Russia faced a hard truth. Alaska was a headache they no longer wanted. The fur trade had slowed. Defending it from the foreign powers was expensive, and maintaining it seemed like a losing game. But rather than let it fall to the British, Russia had another idea. Why not sell it to someone else? And so, in the late 1850s and 1860s, the Russian Empire began quietly looking for a buyer, hoping to offload this frozen burden before it led to more conflict. But who would want such a barren, frozen wasteland? Enter the United States, ready to make a move that no one expected. As Russia's interest in Alaska waned, the United States stepped in with a surprising offer. The year was 1867, and the American Civil War had just ended. The country was looking to expand its influence and territory. But why would the U.S. be interested in a land so cold, remote, and seemingly barren? The man behind this bold decision was William H. Seward, the U.S. Secretary of State at the time. Seward was a firm believer in manifest destiny, the idea that the United States was destined to expand across North America. He saw Alaska not just as a frozen wasteland, but as an opportunity. Seward believed that owning Alaska would open up new resources, enhance trade routes with Asia, and secure America's position in the Pacific. But there was a problem. Many Americans saw it as a terrible idea. When Seward approached Russia, they were eager to sell. Negotiations moved quickly, and on March 30, 1867, a deal was struck. The United States agreed to pay $7.2 million for Alaska, about $140 million in today's money. That price amounted to roughly two cents an acre, a bargain in any sense. Yet not everyone saw it that way at the time. Seward faced fierce criticism for the purchase. Many people mocked the decision, calling it Seward's folly or Seward's icebox. They couldn't understand why the U.S. would spend millions on what they saw as a desolate, frozen piece of land 
with little to offer. Politicians and newspapers openly ridiculed the move, claiming it was a waste of taxpayer money. But Seward had a long-term vision. He saw potential where others didn't. Alaska, he believed, was not just an icy wilderness, but a land with untapped resources. Beyond its strategic position in the Pacific, Seward suspected there might be minerals, timber, and most importantly, a pathway for future trade with Asia. Despite the backlash, Seward stood by his decision. On October 18, 1867, the United States officially took possession of Alaska with a simple ceremony at Sitka, the capital of Russian America. The Russian flag was lowered, the American flag raised, and Alaska became part of the United States. In the end, William Seward's gamble would pay off in ways no one could have imagined at the time. While the initial reaction was one of scorn, history would soon reveal that the U.S. had made one of the smartest real estate deals of all time. But why didn't Canada, Alaska's neighbor, show the same interest? We'll get to that next. Now, you might be wondering, Alaska sits right next to Canada, so why didn't they step up and buy this land from Russia? After all, it seems like the most natural move, right? Well, the reasons for Canada's hesitation are more complex than they appear. In the mid-1800s, Canada wasn't the country we know today. It was still a British colony, meaning that any decision to buy Alaska wasn't up to the Canadians alone. It was up to the British Empire. And at that time, Britain had no interest in expanding into such a remote and barren land. In fact, the British were more focused on managing their existing colonies rather than acquiring new territories, especially one as cold and distant as Alaska. Another factor was money. The asking price for Alaska was $7.2 million, or roughly $140 million in today's terms. For Canada, a young colony still struggling with its own infrastructure and development, this was an enormous sum of money to spend on a place that seemed, at the time, to offer little economic return. Canada's population was concentrated much farther south, and the idea of stretching their resources to govern and protect a vast frozen wilderness simply didn't seem like a wise investment. There was also the fear of conflict. Canada shared a long border with Alaska, and the idea of getting involved in a potential territorial dispute with the Russians, or later the Americans, wasn't appealing. Britain and Russia had already faced off in the Crimean War, and the last thing Britain or its colonies wanted was to stir up more trouble with their powerful neighbors. And finally, Canada's relationship with the United States played a role. At the time, there was a growing sense that if anyone was going to control Alaska, it might as well be the Americans rather than the British. Canada had its own ambitions to expand westward, and securing its borders was more of a priority than taking on Alaska's rugged wilderness. In short, while Alaska sat on Canada's doorstep, it wasn't seen as a prize worth pursuing. The cold, barren land seemed like more of a burden than an opportunity, and neither Britain nor Canada wanted to take on that responsibility. So while Russia was eager to sell, Canada passed, leaving the door wide open for the United States to make one of the most surprising and strategic land purchases in history. Looking back now, was the United States' decision to buy Alaska for $7.2 million really worth it? At the time, critics mocked the purchase, calling it Seward's folly, after William Seward, the man who negotiated the deal. They saw it as a foolish investment, millions spent on a land of ice with no apparent value. But today, that decision looks like one of the greatest deals in American history. Fast forward to the present, and Alaska has become a cornerstone of the United States' wealth and security. Beneath its frozen surface lies a treasure trove of natural resources, oil, gas, gold, and minerals. The discovery of vast oil reserves in the early 20th century transformed Alaska into an energy powerhouse, supplying a significant portion of the country's oil needs. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline, stretching over 800 miles, transports millions of barrels of oil from Alaska's northern fields to the rest of the country. The economic impact, billions of dollars in revenue that continue to flow into the U.S. economy. But Alaska's value isn't just about resources, its strategic importance can't be overstated. During the Cold War, Alaska became a key outpost in the defense of the United States. Its proximity to the Soviet Union made it a crucial base for military operations, surveillance, and early warning systems. Even today, with its military bases and radar systems, Alaska serves as a frontline defense for North America, providing a watchful eye on the Arctic and Pacific regions. And then there's Alaska's environmental and geopolitical significance. As climate change opens up new ships 
shipping routes in the Arctic, Alaska has gained new importance as a gateway to untapped economic opportunities. The Arctic region is becoming a hotbed of global interest, with countries competing for influence over its resources and trade routes. The U.S., through Alaska, has a crucial foothold in this emerging geopolitical landscape. Today, Alaska is more than just a frozen wilderness. It's a land of opportunity, wealth, and strategic importance. What was once seen as a desolate outpost has proven to be a key player in America's economy and defense. The purchase that many once scoffed at has turned into a bargain that shaped the nation's future. In hindsight, Seward's so-called folly was no folly at all. It was a masterstroke. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our next fascinating story. We'll see you in the next video.